going to shave, Pa? Maybe Saturday, if we go into town. What are we going to use for money? That feller in town said he'd have some for that 40 head of cattle by Saturday. Better get breakfast started, son. Here comes your brother. Jack, I thought I told you to bury that hide. I thought I'd eat first, Pa. Then get it out of sight. It's a Ponderosa brand. When a man steals beef from his neighbor, he usually tries to bury the hide. Didn't you have time? Well, now then, you, you wouldn't mind if we waited until we had our breakfast, would you, Mr. Cartwright? No, not at all. You wouldn't even have to bury the hide if you told me you needed beef. A big man like Ben Cartwright, we didn't figure you'd want to be bothered to us Tatums. Any man needs eating beef from the Ponderosa, all he has to do is ask for it. Well, since you got several thousand head, that's right generous. But if he doesn't ask for it first, he steal it. You calling me a thief? You've already taken land, Josh. This ranch house of yours is more than a quarter of a mile inside the Ponderosa lines. I never said a thing about that. You ain't figuring to throw us off our place, are you, Cartwright? Gus! Right here, Pa. I got him right in my sight. You just say the word, Pa, and I'll pull this here trigger. the gun belt, man. Now just get off the horse. Jack, move this critter out the way. Now, Ben, you've been pushing people around so much. Maybe you forgot how it feels to get pushed a bit yourself. Pushing people around? I ride in here, I find that hide there with the Ponderosa brand on it. One of your kids got me in his rifle sights. Who's pushing who, Josh? Now you tell me our place is a quarter mile inside the Ponderosa. Well, isn't it? You got money, you got the law. You can probably prove it and push us off any time you like. Josh, I could have done it a long time before this. Yeah, and now for one lousy steer, you're going to try it, I no, forget. Oh, Josh. I got something for you to remember, Cartwright. We don't push easy. Big man. 
He don't look so big now. Well, I sure cut him down to size. Uh, what do you kids know about it? Well, you whooped him, didn't you, Pa? Yeah, I guess so. There wasn't no waltz like you young pups seem to think. For daylight. No, I wish you wouldn't do that. Oh, he's fretting over those rustlers. I heard him down here pacing the floor last night like a caged up cougar. Well, what do you think he's going to do? Ride out and corral them all by himself? Well, he'd give it a try. That's a big trouble, Paul. He still thinks he's 21 years old. You ought to start taking it a mite easier. You tell him, huh? Well, somebody ought to. Oh, don't look at me. throw you? No. Did you bump into a limb or something, Paul? No. Well, forget to duck. What happened? Got into a little scuffle. Into a little scuffle? Who with, Paul? Oh, forget it. Forget it? Why? Because if I told you who it was, you'd all run out of here hot-headed and itchy and looking for trouble, and you'd find the trouble. There'd be some gun play and somebody get hurt. Better change my shirt. I wonder who it was. Oh, a man Paul's age ought not to go around getting into fights. Age has nothing to do with it. I never knew a man yet who didn't think he was as good as the best day he ever saw. Yeah, remember the time Sam Lucas tried to beat the heck out of you? Yeah. That old man must have been 70 or 75 years old and weigh 100 pounds. Huh. Ran you out of town. Hmm. I had to run. He was going to bust my head into that pickaxe handle. You know, maybe we could try to talk Paul into taking it a little easy or something, huh? Yeah, sure. We're going to set him in an easy chair, give him his pipe and slippers. Mm -mm, not me. Well, nothing like that, but... Uh... I might suggest that he cut down a little on the physical side of things. Do a little more supervising, huh? Just supervising? Paul? Well, why not? Other ranches have supervisors. Yeah. What can you do with that? Maybe we can talk Paul into it. Yeah, maybe we can try. Yeah, it won't be easy. Let's eat now and think about it later. You boys are still trying to figure out who I had the fight with. Forget it. Oh, no, sir. We, we just want you to, to avoid them scraps. Fine. I'll avoid them. Now, let's get to business. As far as I can figure things, we've lost about 200 head of cattle in the last three weeks. If it keeps up this way, we'll be out of beef. So we're going to do something about it. Now, each one of you boys flips a coin. Two of you go with me. The odd man stays home. Well? Paul, it's... 
pretty hard ride up there in that, that country. Yeah, and it gets colder than a polar bear's nose. Yeah, and, and there's no telling what kind of trouble we're going to run into, Pa. Well, if you boys don't want to come along with me, I can always take Hop Singh. No, Paul, that, that ain't it. It's... Well, the fact is we think we all ought to go. All of us? Well, someone has to stay home. Why don't you stay? I never have. Yeah, we, we know you ain't never, Paul, and well, that's our point. Yes, see, we, we were thinking maybe you ought to start take, taking a little easy. I like supervising, huh? You, uh, you boys think I might be getting too old for this sort of thing? Now, we didn't say that. What did you say? What did we say, Adam? You know what we said. Yeah. Well, Hoss? Well, Paul, we... Doggone it, we... We think you ought to start taking it a little easier, Paul. A man gets a certain age, you ought to slow down a little bit. Now, we ain't saying you ought to be put out to pasture or nothing. It's... Well, that's comforting. Oh, and... Well, you know, you know a man with three sons ought, ought to be able to get a little of the load taken off his back. <laughs> Hmm. Well, that doesn't sound too bad to me. Sounds pretty good. You, you mean you don't mind? Why should I mind? <laughs> well, we thought that... Well, stop thinking and stop jawing and get to it or else the whole day will be gone. We're on our way, Paul. Be back before dark. Yeah, and, and we're the rustlers. Be back by supper. Right, be right. Uh, Paul, you sure you'll be all right? I'll try to make out, Hoss. Canyon to me. Yeah, but the tracks say it ain't so. They go in, but they don't come out. Uh, there might be a way out at the other end. Or else they're still in there. I sure don't like the looks of it. I need to get trapped in there. You want to find those rustlers, or don't you? Well, yeah, but I want to find them. I don't want them finding me. Let's just be mighty careful. I sure don't like the looks of this. I don't know what you two are going to do, but I'm going to get myself a little closer to the ground. I ain't going to sit up here like no crow on a fence post. Let's take a look. In and out, slick and clean.
Hat I ain't. I ain't never gonna tease you again about wearing them clean shirts. Well, the only reason I wear them is because I knew you'd get shot one day. <laughs> That'll stop the bleeding. You'll be fine as a frog's hair in no time. You all right? Yep, I reckon I am. We ain't got ourselves many problems. We've lost our horses. We ain't got no food and water. And even if I could walk, we couldn't get out of here. Them fellas are using real bullets up there. On top of all that, it's gonna be so cold tonight, it'd freeze a hide right off a drunken cowboy, and we can't build no fire. Uh, at least we did one thing. What's that? Yeah, we found the rustlers. <laughs> should be along soon. Maybe they sleep out tonight. No, I don't think so. They said they'd be back before dark. Besides, they didn't take any food with them. They be back. Hmm? Mr. Horse up there, he smell food cooking. He come to food like homing pigeon. <laughs> what do you smell? No, it can't be. It can't be what? I swear I can smell Hopsing's cooking. <laughs> We're over a half day's ride from the house. You can't smell that distance. Yeah, I don't know about that. I remember once I was smelling biscuits in a sandstorm. The storm was over and we got home. Sure enough, there were the biscuits. Remember that? Yeah. I wish I didn't. Roast pork and sweet taters? You come eat. Roast the pork, sweet potato, keep warm much longer, all dry up. I'm afraid they've run into some kind of trouble. Always do. You eat. I'm not very hungry, I'm saying. They catch trouble? Okay. How you help by not eat? Just in case, better put that back in the oven. You want me sit up all night, keep fire and cook stove? No, no, you can let it go out. When the boys come back, I'll fire it up again. Chan hai yang, ne, mo fa ti ya, da. Man, it's colder than a well digger. Toenails out there. Where's Curly? Oh, keep an eye on them heart rights. Throwing in a couple of shots now and again. Just to let him know who's boss. Any doubt in your mind who's boss around here? Didn't mean nothing by that. <sighs> Never thought coffee'd taste better than whiskey, but it does. How long before dawn? What you worrying about? Sun comes up, it comes up. You figure come daylight, we can uh, pick off them cartwrights and get the herd on the trail, huh? Sure, sure. Do you think I'd throw in with Josh Tatum? Didn't know what I was doing? Oh, you got it all figured out, boss. I mean, they ain't going nowhere without them horses. And that big feller's hitting the leg. And... The only thing is, they'll be dug in deep by daylight. Well, then we'll dig them out. Providing old Ben Cartwright doesn't come looking for his boys at that time. That old goat, what can he do? What can he do? Well, he's just one more man, ain't he? Sometimes that one more man is just one too many. The Tatums are due here in the morning to help drive the herd. That makes six of us. Figure three to pick off them Cartwright pups. That, that leaves three to take care of the old man. That ought to do it. Yeah, it should. You know something? One slug takes care of one man. I don't care who he is. You're new around here, Johnny. Yeah. 
Maybe that's what you need. Somebody who don't get the shakes around old Ben Cartwright. I'll take care of him. Johnny, you see that you do. Shot. Yeah. You know way to get at him. Where is he? You see them rocks up there? The great big one on the left and the two little ones on the right just piled on top of each other? Yeah. He's behind those little ones on the right, and there ain't no way to get at him. I'll get him. You know what we're gonna do? Shoot through the rocks? Nope. All those times we were in Virginia City and you were busy chasing girls and he was busy throwing people over tables, you know what I was doing? You're probably down at the bank counting your money. Yeah, checking the books to find out if the bank's gonna go broke. No, I was improving my education, playing billiards. That big rock on the left's the cushion. The character behind the little rock is the object ball, and the slug is the cue ball. Reckon you hit him? Well, I should have. The angle was right. What'd you do, try to change position? <laughs> Wise guy down there must have bounced one off the rocks. You reckon Paul started out after us yet? I doubt that. After we told him we'd do all his fighting for him, he's probably sitting at home taking it easy, waiting for us to ride in. You go now, Mr. Cartwright? Yeah. You go for Virginia City, get Sheriff? No, there's no need for that. Oh, you think no trouble? Yes, I think no trouble. What have you got there? A sandwich. This is for Little Joe and Mr. Adam. Mm -hmm. This is for Mr. Hoss. Yeah, seems about right. You tell Mr. Hoss I cook turkey for supper. Oh, that's fine. What are the rest of us going to eat? <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's a pretty funny joke, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> No, not so funny. Have to kill another turkey, pick another turkey, stuff another turkey, cook another turkey. Big joke. Goodbye. <laughs> Good night. the way it's going to be, huh? I give you a beating. Now, every time I poke my face out of the brush, I'm looking down a gun barrel. You're kind of poor loser, ain't you, Ben? You stole one of my steers. You're on my land. For all I know, those wolf pup sons of yours are behind a tree right now with a beat on me. If that was so, you wouldn't be standing there talking about it. Now, come on, give me back my guns. I'll give them back to you when I'm ready. You're getting mighty edgy over one measly steer, ain't you? Already told you, Josh. Any man needs food can get a steer just for the asking. But the Pondros has lost hundreds of head in the past month through rustling. I'm not edgy over the one you stole. And I ain't edgy over the hundreds you lost, unless you're accusing me of being a part of it. If I was, I'd tell you. How about my guns? You find your guns about a mile up the trail. My back feels better that way. What's the matter, Ben? Don't you trust me? No, I don't trust you, Josh. Besides, I gotta be on my way. Oh, yeah, you Cartwrights always got big things to do, ain't you? Big enough for me, going after my sons. Your sons? What happened? They lost or something? They went up into the high country to look for the rustlers. They didn't get back last night. I'm going after them. No posse? You going all by yourself? 
Don't get time for a posse. They're my sons. What would you do if they were yours? Sign of him yet? No. If he's coming, he ought to show up pretty soon. Now he's got to come up that draw. When he does, like a setting duck. Yeah? Now, if he's alone, you can take him. If he's got a posse along, empty that rifle and we'll get out of here. Hey, how's Curly? Staying away from rocks, you can bet. Well, he ain't hurt too bad. I've got a bandage on it and stopped the bleeding. Man, I sure could use some whiskey. We should have thought of that. I did. Had a pint in my saddlebag. Where is it now? Gave it to Curly. He needs it more than you do. Well, you tell him to save some for me so I can get this night chill out of my bones. You just take care of old Ben Cartwright. I'll see that you get a case of the stuff. You took long enough getting there. Well, we ain't rich enough to buy horses. They hang a man for stealing them. <laughs> We'd come as soon as we could. Which way did you come? Up over the ridge, like a set of wood. I don't suppose you've seen anything of Ben Cartwright. Yeah, I seen him right after I started out. He had me bushwhacked as pretty as you ever seen. How come he didn't shoot at you? I talked him out of it. That's how come. I can handle Ben Cartwright. We don't have to worry about him anyway. Johnny's waiting for him. So he didn't go to Virginia City for a posse. Mm. Looks like we got them cart rats right where we want them. Maybe you have, maybe you ain't. Where's Johnny? He's covering the draw where Ben's got to come. Why don't you go down there and back him up? Oh, wait, there's no need for that. Johnny can take care of him. A chipmunk couldn't get by him. I don't care if a chipmunk can get by or not. I'm thinking about Ben Cartwright, and I don't want that old coot getting in here. Gus, you go down there and back him up just like I said. Well, ben got you spooked? He ain't nine feet tall. You I guy. know, I know, but we ain't taking no chances. Now, where's Curly? He's keeping them three cart rides pinned down. You know something? One of them got Curly in the shoulder. I told you to be careful, didn't I? Jack, go spell Curly off. Whereabouts is he, Jake? See the needle pointed rock over yonder? He's hunkered down behind it. Better let him know you're coming. He's getting skittish as a hungry coyote. Right, have some coffee. Where's the herd? Up on the mesa. Plenty of grass there. Ain't nowhere for him to go. What you worrying about? Ben Cartwright. But I told you I got... I know. You told me Johnny's taking care of him. And Johnny ain't but a kid. He don't know Ben Cartwright. Ben's got to come up through that draw, and Johnny's got him in his sights he can't miss. 
He ain't there. What do you mean, he ain't there? Well, like I said, he ain't there. I looked all over for him. I never should have sent that darn kid down there. Why don't you let a man handle it? He might have changed position. You believe that? No. I reckon I don't. Where that old buzzard is now? Howdy, Josh. I wish I had a quarter of that stuff. That slug's still in there, Curly? Yeah, it's still in. It's just like a hot branding iron. Josh, how about us getting this over with so I can get to a saw bones? I've got to get the slug out of here. Yeah. You take it easy for a spell, Curly, and you favor that shoulder. Gus, you going back down to where Johnny was and keep your eyes peeled. Jake, let's you and me see if we can't do something about these cartwright boys. Get the rifles. Paul is coming. I sure hope he brings some sandwiches. I swear my stomach's empty. A chicken liver would feel like a full meal. Well, you can't have any food. How come? You're wounded. Wounded man ain't supposed to have anything. Not even water. Dad Bernard, I'm wounded in the leg, not in the belly. Well, that don't make any difference. Right, Joe? That's right. I heard it from a doctor in Virginia City. Really? Mm-hmm. I'll kill you. Why, them dirty, no good for nothing grabbing. <laughs> Take food right out of a man's mouth. Hey, Adam. Yeah? See that little clump of rocks up there, that dead bush in the middle? Yeah. They got me a real live one in there. He's setting up a pattern. Every time I squeeze off around that him, he fires one back at me before I can even clear my chamber. Watch. You see him? Uh-huh. Try him again. He's getting careless. He's hit. Yeah. You didn't even shoot. That's right. Hey. Must be Paul. <laughs> hey, hot diggity. He's coming in. Hope he's got some sandwiches. I figured you weren't coming. Hey, Paul, did you bring any food? Yeah, I did. It was in my saddlebags, but I got bushwhacked and my horse spooked and run off. Hey, what happened to your leg? Uh, I got shot. It, it didn't bust no bones, I don't think. I, I can't walk on it, though. Uh, Paul, what kind of food was in them bags? I don't know. Hop Singh said something about turkey, and I suppose it was some of that real tender roast beef of his. Dad, burn it. Since you didn't make it here with it, I sure do wish you'd have sent cheese. Cheese? Why? Because I don't like cheese. Thought maybe you went to Virginia City to get the sheriff and a posse. Oh, by the time I realized there was real trouble, I didn't have a horse. 
Well, don't you think we're not glad to have you with us, Parvin? That puts you in the same jam we're in. Well, why not? My name's Cartwright, too, isn't it? Bad, son. Not too bad. Here's the boy. How did it happen? I don't know. I was shooting down at them three cartwrights. Next thing I know, I'm hit. Couldn't have been one of them, though. They didn't have that angle on me. Ben Cartwright. Had to be. Johnny's gone. Now you're hit. There. That'll take care of the bleeding. Pa? Is it busted up bad? No, it ain't nothing but a scratch. You'll hardly even have a scar to show to some pretty gal. <laughs> Give him another shot of that whiskey. How is it? Well, how would it be? He's shot, ain't he? I was just wondering. Living this way, I always figured we'd catch some lead one day. But thinking about it, seeing your boy with a slug in him is two different things. He might have been killed. This ain't exactly a beast thing I've got in my shoulder. Yeah, I know it, Curly, but it ain't the same thing. It may not be the same to you, Josh, but it's the same thing to me. One old buzzard holding up six men, it sure seems what like... What six men? Ain't you forgetting something? Johnny's gone, you and Jack are hit. The way I figured that leaves only three, not six. Stinking Ben Cartwright, why did he have to stick his nose into this? What's he gonna do? Let us keep his boys pinned down till he runs out of ammunition. One of them's wounded. You think he's gonna like that? That'll turn him as mean as a trapped cougar. You all right? He's gonna be. Did you see Gus? Yeah, Gus is all right, but I seen something else. Right. Ben Cartwright is down there with his boys. What did I tell you? Anybody else with him? No, but he got in there with a couple of rifles and probably some extra ammunition. He's gonna be a tough nut to crack. I never said he wouldn't be, did I? You never said nothing. You're so full of ideas. Now, come on, let's hear one of them. Well, first off, I think you better take Curly cross country to Silver City and find the sawbones. That slug in his shoulder's got to come out. All right, all right, but what about the herd? Right now, that herd we wrestle don't seem so important. What are you aiming to do? Just walk out of here? You got a better idea? Yeah, I'll give the orders. Now, why don't you just try that? Never should have thrown in with you in the first place. I might know you'd go soft. Just because a man don't want to see his sons get killed don't mean he's going soft. As far as I'm concerned, it does. Uh, Curly, think you can set a horse? You just lead me to him. All right. You better get out of here. Curly, you take care of that shoulder, boy. Thanks, Josh. What are you doing that for, Pa? For to keep from getting shot when I talk to Ben Cartwright. What do you want to talk to him for? You got shot. They might get Gus. That's pretty quiet, Pa. Yeah. Hey, Pa, look. Josh Tatum. Dang, if I trust you. Oh, hold it, hold but it. Paul! Never mind. Just do as I say, I'm still running this show. show concern, isn't it? And for the record, there's a clean wound in the leg. It'll be all right. Jack got shot in the arm. Well, what'd you expect? Did nobody get hurt? Ben, I didn't figure it'd turn out this way. You see, we've been rustling some of your stock. 
Well, it didn't seem like much you having so many. It didn't hardly seem like stealing. And I suppose ambushing my sons didn't seem much like shooting. I was miles away when a big one got shot. Oh, now you're going to tell me that if you'd been here, you'd have put a stop to it. I've done a lot of things in my time that I ain't proud of, Ben. And today, I might have gotten my kids killed. I might have killed one of yours. You're alive right now because you didn't. All right, Ben. I only come back here because I'm sorry for what I've done. I figured you was man enough to take into account that I ain't rich. I ain't no boss and no ponderosa. I got the same feeling toward my boys as you got toward yours. Maybe all you want is just revenge. Well, if that's what you want, you better dig in deep and save your ammunition. That is, unless you shoot me in the back when I walk out of here. Josh? Now, nobody's going to shoot you in the back. Now, we're pretty well hold up here. We've got plenty of ammunition. If you and your gang figure you, you haven't had enough, you just say the word and we can start this ruckus all over again. Don't you stand there yelling at me. Would you want to go on with this or don't you? If you want to try your luck again. Ben, you got me wrong. Ain't all the cattle in Nevada's worth one of our boys. That's what I come here to tell you. By golly. We're both reaching for the same conclusion. Except we're butting our heads together like old billy goats. No. We're, we're like a couple of them she bears with a litter of cubs. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't never tried to mess around with one of them, have you? Me? <laughs> I got more sense than that. Yeah, me too. Well, why are we messing with each other? I can't figure it. Ben. Here's me and my boys. I figure we can rig up a litter and help you get the big one back to the Ponderosa. Then we'll help you round up the cattle that we rustled. After it, you can take us down to Virginia City to see the sheriff. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get the boys out of here. Seems how he had to shoot one. I wish it had been the little one. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I'm saying I'm dying of starvation. That's all that's matter to me. I got turkey. Oh, good. That'll do for a starter. Then later on, you can fix me a full meal. <laughs> he make joke? I don't think so. I got two turkey. All right, Hop Singh, that'll do for a start. Uh, you better get some beefsteaks going. The Tatums are staying for dinner. I think they're hungry. They've had a hard day. Very good. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I figured you'd want to get into Virginia City to have Jack's arm patched up, Josh. The sooner the better. So I, uh, long walks. I had the, uh, boys saddle up three horses for you. More than decent of you, Ben. As soon as we see the sheriff, I'll have someone bring these horses back. I reckon we'll be staying there quite a while. Yeah, well, I reckon you're right. Rustling's a serious crime. I ain't denying it. Of course, uh, seeing as how you, you didn't really go through with it, and... Seeing as how you told us where the cows are. I ain't asking no favors. I'm not offering any. Except for the loan of the horses. I expect you'll want one of your boys to go along with us, see we get to the sheriff, and then get these horses back to you. Why? Can I trust you? Ben. When I get straightened out with the law, I hope things will be different between you and me. Mm -hmm. I mean, well. Well, what are you waiting for? You're going to stand around here till you get blood poison in that arm? You heard, Mr. Cartwright. If you ain't forgot how to ride, get started. For a whale of tar out of both of you. Dang, 
wolf pups. Raising kids ain't easy, Ben. No. Sure isn't, Josh. Of course, there's, uh, there's one good thing. A man can sure start taking it easy once his boys are grown big enough to take care of things. Just get off the horse. Jack, move this critter out the way. Now, Ben, you've been pushing people around so much. Maybe you forgot how it feels to get pushed a bit yourself. Pushing people around? I ride in here, I find that hide there with the Ponderosa brand on it. One of your kids got me in his rifle sights. Who's pushing who, Josh? Now you tell me our place is a quarter mile inside the Ponderosa. Well, isn't it? You got money, you got the law, you can probably prove it and push us off any time you like. Josh, I could have done it a long time before this. Yeah, and now for one lousy steer, you're gonna try it, I no, think. Oh, Josh. I got something for you to remember, Cartwright. We don't push easy. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Thief. You've already taken land, Josh. This ranch house of yours is more than a quarter of a mile inside the Ponderosa lines. I never said a thing about that. You ain't figuring to throw us off our place, are you, Cartwright? Gus! Right here, Paul. I got him right in my sights. You just say the word, Paul, and I'll pull this here trigger. the gun belt, man.
You going to shave, Pa? Maybe Saturday, if we go into town. Where are we going to use for money? That feller in town said he'd have some for that 40 head of cattle by Saturday. Better get breakfast started, son. Here comes your brother. Jack, I thought I told you to bury that hide. I thought I'd eat first, Pa. Then get it out of sight. It's a Ponderosa brand. When a man steals beef from his neighbor, he usually tries to bury the hide. Didn't you have time? Well, now then, you, you wouldn't mind if we waited until we had our breakfast, would you, Mr. Cartwright? No, not at all. You wouldn't even have to bury the hide if you told me you needed beef. A big man like Ben Cartwright, we didn't figure you'd want to be bothered to the Tatums. Any man needs eating beef from the Ponderosa, all he has to do is ask for it. Oh, seeing as you got several thousand head, that's right generous. But if he doesn't ask for it first, he steal it. You calling me? <laughs> He don't look so big now. Boss, you'll cut him down.